Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Cancer Zappers by ABBA where you get to follow along with all the cool ways in which we zap cancer with radiation. Alright, major update. About 9 days ago, I got the vaccine. So my arm was pretty sore the day of, but the following morning when I woke up, I was as good as new. So right now I'm just patiently waiting for part 2. In today's episode, we get to meet another medical physicist by the name of Dr. Jessica Fagestrom. The cool thing is that Dr. Fagestrom is an if-then ambassador. Now this program brings together 125 women in the fields of science, technology, engineer, mathematics to serve as high profile role models for middle school girls. So Jessica definitely has a very clear and fun way of describing what she does as a medical physicist. As always, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It is free of charge, very free. So just go ahead and subscribe because in subscribing, you get to be notified when I have more videos and you can stay on top of the channel and the program so go ahead and subscribe thank you so much take it away jessica if we support a woman in stem then she can change the world my name is dr jessica fagerstrom i am a medical physicist and i work with northwest medical physics center i work full-time at a clinic here in seattle washington I use things that I learned in physics class and with physics research, and they're applied to questions in medicine. And I personally work in a clinic where we treat people who are really sick with radiation to help them feel better. I really like physics. I have known I liked it since I had a wonderful physics teacher back in high school. So I went to college and got a degree in physics. And then I really like this application where I'm using this subject that I really enjoy and use it to help people um, in medicine. So it's a wonderful application. I love my career because it is, uh, is a team sport. I work in radiation therapy and physics is one part of that team. And we're a really important part because we make sure that radiation is delivered safely and effectively. But we work with a huge number of people who all have really important jobs. So I work with a um, team of dosimetrists and doctors, and then also nursing and people who set up the patients every day. They're the rock stars of the department. They're called therapists. And then people who work at the front desk. So it's a huge team effort that makes sure that the patients get the radiation that they need to in order to get better. This is a very small version of something called a linear accelerator. And this is one of the kinds of machines that I use at my work. Um, the linear accelerators are one of the tools that we use to generate radiation. And then we can focus it on a patient's tumor. And our linear accelerators at work are a lot more sophisticated than my little toy, but we have all of these different ways that we can direct the radiation very precisely at tumor cells. So this is a really cool tool. It's not the only way that we generate radiation, but it is one of the, um, one of the ways that we do at my work. So I went to graduate school and graduate school was tough for me. Um, I, I mentioned that sometimes you hit some roadblocks when you're doing research. That's part of what you're doing in research is you're doing something that someone hasn't ever done before. So it's not usually a straight line. And so I had to start over some experiments and that was frustrating, but also why it was so rewarding because I was able to publish a series of papers on things that uh, nobody has ever done before. So that's exciting, but it also was tough. So um, I, I'm glad that I went to school and I'm glad I went through that experience, but it, it was um, it, it wasn't the easiest thing for me. No matter what you do in medical physics, you're doing it to help people. So it's a really cool application of physics and at the end of the day that you worked really hard to make sure that somebody who is sick is getting better or other branches of medical physics do things like be, being able to take pictures inside your body so that we know where cancer is or how to treat cancer. So these are really cool ways that you can use physics in, as part of your job. I lived in Hawaii and while I was there I did a lot of different things that I don't do as much in Seattle because it tends to be a little colder and rain a little more but I like spearfishing, I love hiking, I like going to Sounders games with my husband and um, I like doing volunteer activities around the Seattle area. If we support a woman in STEM then she can change the world. 
I think the best advice that I've received is to try new things. Um, I think that uh, even if you fail, it's important to try things that might not always succeed, but to keep trying because that's how you succeed in research. It's also how you're able to expand your horizons as part of your career. And let me just add one more thing about medical physicists. There are different kinds of medical physicists out there. You have medical physicists who work in industry, you have medical physicists who work in academic institutions, doing research, teaching, um, and you have physicists who work in the clinical settings um, in communities and private hospitals. So, and that's just to name a few.